Does government kill jobs? That's a counterintuitive idea because we hear so many politicians claiming they're going to create jobs, or they did create jobs. President Obama says his $700 billion stimulus created or saved 3 million jobs. It's impossible to prove or disprove, but with unemployment still at 9%, the president says, let's try it again. He now wants Congress to pass a new $450 billion plan to create jobs. Will it work? I doubt it. The central planners never stop to consider that maybe their policies actually kill jobs. My next guest says, yes, they do, and he's experienced the government regulations firsthand. Peter Schiff runs a brokerage firm. He has 150 employees. What happened to you that you were complaining to Congress about? Regulations are uh, running up the cost of doing business all over the country. I mean, there are a lot of companies that never even get started because they can't overcome that regulatory hurdle. Many that do get started end up going bankrupt because they can't afford the cost. Right, and even those you, that do. You got started. You, you claim you would have hired 1,000 more people but for the well, regulations? I had a huge plan to expand back then. I wanted to open up a lot of offices. I had some capital to do it. I had investors lined up. My business was, uh, was doing really well. Uh, but unfortunately, because of the regulations in the security industry, I was not able to hire the people at the time that I wanted to hire. In well, fact, you can't I can't just hire a... when you want to hire? Well, no, you could. Well, the regulators basically uh, decide how many people you can hire and when you can hire them. I mean, uh, there are a lot of regulations in the security industry. They cost me a fortune to comply with. I have so an entire you want to hire an analyst. <laughs> You can't just hire them. You have to ask permission to hire the well, analysts? I, well, the analysts I could hire, but I had to get permission to publish their research, which I didn't get for years. And so I can't pay analysts if I can't, if I can't sell their research. So the, 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 the regulators kind of micromanage the industry, but I think they really do it for the benefit of these large firms because it really puts the brakes on the smaller firms who are trying to grow. You know, regulation is my single biggest fixed cost. Now, they're not purposefully trying to help the big firms at the small firm's expense, but there is data showing it's cheaper for the big firms to pay for this. Well, obviously, when you have the enormous economies of scale, you can afford to pay for all the compliance. Now, you guys in the industry always use this jargon like guys in compliance. And uh, to the average viewer, explain. I mean, this means you have 10 people who just try to figure out if you're obeying the rules. Right. The, the, the securities regulators basically set up all these rules, all these I's you have to dot and T's that you have to cross, otherwise they'll shut you down if you don't do it. And so you have to spend all the money and all the time to comply with all these rules and regulations. So 10 people it, are just nerdily doing their tiny... Yeah. Yeah, and things take forever to do. You can't just act very quickly because everything has to be done uh, through this maze of compliance. People are complying with regulations instead of producing, instead of investing in growing the economy. They're trying to survive the regulators. And this that you're talking about was all true before Dodd-Frank, which is this here, by the way, this 850-page bill. And this is just the bill. The real regulations are still being written. Oh, yeah. The, the regulations have been piled on year after year. You know, they never repeal the old regulations. They just add new ones. I mean, a lot of the stuff that cost me the most had to do with the anti-money laundering stuff that came out of the Patriot Act. But, you know, I've, I've been struggling with regulations. You moved some jobs offshore because <laughs> well, of the... I am. I, I started a whole brokerage firm and bank in the Caribbean so that I can service my international clients because it's too expensive to do it here. But these regulations are passed for a reason. And the president said about Dodd-Frank, this reform will put a stop to the bad loans that fueled the debt-based bubble. Uh, bubble. Not at all. In fact, the bad loans were fueled by the Federal Reserve. They were fueled by Freddie and Fannie, by government-guaranteed bank accounts. Well, this will stop it. This it's will not, stop all. It's not going to stop it at all. It's going to make it worse. And, you know, the worst regulations, I think, that Congress writes are the ones that specifically punish you for hiring people. Because in America today, the minute you hire somebody, the minute you become an employer, you basically lose all your rights. And so the government has made it very dangerous in America to hire somebody. So most small business owners go out of their way to avoid hiring people because they don't want the legal liability. Because you can never fire them, or it's too hard to fire them. Well, if you fire them, they can sue you for any one of a dozen reasons. They can sue you frivolously. You know, if employees can quit for whatever reason they want, and they can, employers should be able to fire for whatever reason they want. They also want to make it illegal to not hire someone because they're unemployed, and we'll cover that later yeah, in the well, show. Then but no one's going to interview anybody who's unemployed for a long period of time because they're afraid they'll get sued if they don't hire them. Let's go to the new Obama jobs plan. Stimulus? Must do some good. 
No, it's not, it's not going to stimulate the economy. It's going to stimulate government. It's going to stimulate more debt and more consumption. The only thing that's really going to stimulate the economy is to shrink the burden that government places on it. What we need is to produce our way out of this gigantic hole that bad monetary and fiscal policy have left us in. But simply borrowing more money uh, and spending it is not the solution. That's part of the problem. Most Americans think it is. Most, uh, or a higher percentage of people think the jobs plan is a good plan than not. Well, because they don't understand economics. If somebody took the time to explain it to them, they would understand it. Well, speaking of understanding economics, let's go to someone who doesn't agree with you and ought to understand economics, Josh Bivens. He's with the Economic Policy Institute. He joins us now from Washington, D.C. You say Obama's new plan is good but too small. Yeah, that's right. Um, I think all along, a lot of people said that sort of the, the shock to private spending caused by the bursting of the housing bubble was enormous, and it's going to require an enormous response, and we haven't got that. We've got some okay responses, but still nowhere near as big as the scale of the problem. And bigger would mean more debt doesn't bother you? No. Um, I mean, the way debt hurts is when the economy is at full employment, when there are no idle resources around, when the government starts taking on more debt, it starts competing with private sector firms that are trying to take on more debt to but, fund productive investments, it drives up the interest rate. That's what causes the crowding out of private sector activity. There is no increase in interest rates. All right, Josh, you heard what Peter said about regulation. He says it's killing business, killed his business. You don't agree. I don't. I mean, I'll say one thing. You know, I, I'm not an expert on every single aspect of each industrial set of regulations. I, I will say, you know, you look at the aggregate data, and to me, when I hear that regulation is hurting business, it's inhibiting recovery, I hear something along the lines of, it's making it more expensive to produce, so businesses are choosing to produce less. Then I look at the data, and I look at profit rates for businesses over the past couple of years, and the amount of profit they earn on each thing they ship is off the charts. The problem is not that they're not making enough money on each thing they sell, it's they're not selling enough. They don't have enough customers because there's not enough spending in this economy. Look, we have to pay all this money back with interest. If the U.S. economy is broke, if consumers are broke now, think of how much worse off they're going to be in a few years when they have to pay all this money back. I mean, the last thing this economy needs right now is more debt. All right, let's leave debt and stick with regulation. Josh, when we talked to you about this, you cited a survey about what businesses worry about. I mean, if you look at the National Federation of Independent Businesses, it's a federation of small and moderate-sized businesses, and they ask them, and they've asked them for a long time, what's the number one problem facing your business right now? And basically, these small business owners, that they're always not very happy about regulation and taxes. In the past couple of years, though, it's not the top thing. The top thing they worried about is poor sales. It has dwarfed both regulation and taxes individually for the first time in a long time. And but I wait, think wait, that's what? basically wait, business wait, telling wait, you what the problem is. Wait, Josh, you said dwarf. We just put this graphic up. It is first, poor sales, 25%. But 19% said government regulations. 18% said taxes. That's pretty darn close. Okay, clearly the poor sales measure is much higher than it normally is, which is, should be the case. We're still lingering from the after effects of a ter terrible recession, you know, the worst in generations. And so right now, the problem facing business, the number one problem, even businesses that normally talk about regulation and taxes, is poor sales. That should really tell us something. But the government can't solve that problem. I mean, the reason that sales are poor is because Americans are broke from paying all the taxes uh, uh, in the past. So you can't just get the sales back. Unfortunately, our economy has to restructure and adapt for the fact that we are broke and we can't just keep on spending borrowed money. We have to produce more, we have to export more, and none of that is going to happen with all the rules and regulations and taxes that are in place today. We have to dismantle this and we have to dramatically shrink the size of government or the economy will never grow and those sales will never recover. Uh, Josh, I have Dodd Frank in front of me, all 850 pages. Do you say that this isn't going to hurt businesses, that it doesn't make some businesses say, I I'm not going to expand, I'm not going to create a business? Oh, I mean, it may well hurt some individual businesses, um, but, you know, I'm not in this for what is best for a particular business. I'm in this about what is best for the American economy. And if you look at what happened over the past decade, I would say an under-regulated financial sector was a big part it of the problem. It wasn't under-regulated. <laughs> I'm in yeah, the financial sector. Yeah, that's where we sector. disagree. No, it's, uh, it, the regulations have gone through the charts. Yeah, you guys are running wild. You're that's, a bunch of greedy... No, 
the regulators are running the security business. Are you kidding me? I mean, they're the big part of the problem. It was well, then the how do all these bad ban. things happen? Because a regulation like a fairy dust would have stopped all the bad stuff. Well, you remember, the government came in and created the moral hazard. They subsidized all the risks. They told people... By moral well, hazard, you mean they subsidized the risks. They said to people, put your money in the bank. Who cares what they do with it? The government's going to insure the bank accounts. They said, we're going to guarantee all these mortgages. It doesn't matter if people can pay the loans back. As the government's got it guaranteed. The government came in and poisoned the well. It wasn't because we didn't have enough government involvement. We didn't have enough free market involvement. That was the problem.